So thank you all very much, and I appreciate the opportunity to go through um, what I think is another really exciting set of developments in the management of patients with multiple myeloma. I think Jesus gave a, a great summary and description of um, the most recent FDA-approved drug we have in myeloma, um, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions around that. What I want to talk about are some targets that uh, are uh, oldies but goodies, and that is targeting Cerebron. And Cerebron is something that's within every cell. And in fact, if you begin to look at Cerebron expression in myeloma cells, it's no different than it is in normal plasma cells. And part of the advantage of using drugs like the IMIDs, and as you can see here, I've got pomalidomide, lenalidomide, and thalidomide, which are all sort of in the same family is that uh, Cerebron is a target that's present both in the myeloma cell and in the immune system. And you get differential effects when you target Cerebron in these two cell types. For example, when you target Cerebron in a myeloma cell, it attacks IKZF1, which you don't really have to know much about except to know that the surrogates are Icarus and Ielios. And the reason that I say that is we're gonna talk about Icarus and Ielios in a few slides. Just remember, these are two important proteins that are a consequence of binding Cerebron. And when you do that in a myeloma cell, you downregulate proteins called IRF4 or MYC, and that downregulation results in myeloma cell death. And that's important because that's part of the reason why thalidomide, lenalidomide, and pomalidomide are effective in treating myeloma. But at the same time, those same targets are actually present also in NK cells and T cells. And when you target Cerebron and downregulate Icarus and Ielios in the immune cells, you actually upregulate IL-2, downregulate TNF, with the net result is that you activate T cells and activate NK cells. So while you have the same target in these two types of cells, you get very different effects on those targets. And that's important because it's almost like a double whammy. You get myeloma cell death through binding Cerebron, and at the same time, you activate the immune system. And this is part of the reason why when you partner antibodies like daratumumab or elotuzumab or esetuximab with the IMIDs, you don't just get one plus one equals two, you actually get one plus one equals four. That synergy of combining an IMID with an antibody is because of the same target in immune cells resulting in immune activation. So that's a really nice way to think about how these drugs work in uh, admittedly somewhat of a simplistic way. Now, I'm gonna walk you through some slides that I've used in presentations before, and I'm gonna highlight a couple of important points. The first cell mod uh, that I wanna talk about is a drug called ibertamide. And the other name for ibertamide is CC220. Uh, and for those of you who don't like long names, we just call it Iber. Um, and the reason they're called cell mods is that unlike lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and thalidomide, these drugs have been engineered to have a more potent effect on the immune system. So they still bind Cerebron. That Cerebron still causes direct myeloma cell death. But the impact on immune function, the bottom of that last graph that I showed you, is far greater than what we see with thalidomide, lenalidomide, or pomalidomide. And just to give you a relative potency here, you can see that the potency of lenalidomide and pomalidomide at targeting Icarus and Ielios is 20 times lower than what you see with ibertamide. This is a far more potent molecule at binding the target than either lenalidomide or pomalidomide. And that's what, was, that's what we were so excited about. Now, just to give you some relative comparative data here, and again, this is laboratory data, so it's always hard uh, to really uh, put it in context, but what I think you'll see here, if you look at the red bars, which is Iber, what you see is that um, lenalidomide and pomalidomide are less potent at inducing myeloma cell death. And on the bottom one, what you'll see here uh, are the effects of IL-2, which is a pro-stimulatory growth factor, that with ibertamide, you get a lot more effect on normal immune T cells than you do with bortezomib or Velcade or other things along the line. So again, it's much more potent at, at inducing immune effects. 
Now to take this one step further, and these are not cell lines, these are actually primary patient samples. If you look at the effect on cell survival in pomalidomide refractory patients, or patients that have low levels of cerebron. Remember, all of these drugs bind cerebron. And what you see is after Iber, you get a significant reduction in both the POM resistant patients and the cerebron low patients, suggesting that this drug can overcome low levels of expression or can overcome even in patients that are refractory to pomalidomide. And that tells us we've got new potency in patients. So it's one thing to see it in a cell line. It's another thing to see it in, in patient samples and in actual uh, patient cells, which I think to me is really, really exciting. And on the flip side, if you look at NK cell and T cell proliferation, what you'll notice is that most of the graphs are going up. What that tells us is that, uh, that you're seeing significant induction of immune activation, CD4 cells, CD8 cells, NK cells, all of them are pretty much going up, suggesting that this is not just a direct effect on myeloma cells, but that it's a very potent immune effect as well. And to me, this suggests it's a great partner for any immune-based therapies that we use, all of those approaches that Dr. Verdeja showed you in his presentation as well. So there was a trial looking at ibertamide in, um, uh, in increasing doses. And the, the cohort that we're most excited about is the Iber plus dex. And yes, there is still dexamethasone in this, just like in POM and LEN and THAL, dex significantly enhances the efficacy against myeloma. And it turns out it increases the immune activation as well. Sort of different than what you might think, but that, is, that actually is a true statement. And when I showed some of this data, what you'll see is that in patients who are triple class refractory, similar to what Dr. Berdeja showed for, uh, for uh, Belomaf, roughly a third of patients will respond. And if you look at patients with DARA and POM resistant myeloma, again, roughly a third of patients go on to respond. So this clearly is able to overcome POM and LEN and THAL resistance. And one of the things that we like about this treatment from a clinical perspective is that it's tolerated a lot better than LEN or POM are tolerated, that patients may be able to stay on it for a longer period of time. And in fact, that's caused us to really think about looking at this in, a, um, uh, in, uh, in smoldering myeloma as well. And uh, I'm not sure if that'll come up during Q&A, but that's certainly a trial we're very interested in initiating. Now, this is just a quick snapshot in terms of depth of response and uh, a duration of response. And what I want to point out is really this patient here in green, which is one of my patients, actually, at the lowest dose we used, was one of the first responders on this trial and has been on now for almost three years in continuous partial response, tolerating the drug really well. We've reduced the dexamethasone, as you might expect, but in general continues to do quite well. And as you can see, when you go up on the dose, the depth of response starts to increase. Uh, and uh, this is an early snapshot of the data. You'll see more of this coming up, hopefully at ASH and ASCO coming up very soon. Now there's one other cell mod that you may have seen or heard about in the last few months. Uh, and that's a drug that still doesn't even have a name. So the last one I talked about was Iber, ibertamide or Iber. This is a drug called CC92480. And so we're just going to call it 480 for short. And what I think you'll see here again in terms of the ability to induce targeting of alios and Icaros, much more potent than either pomalidomide or lenalidomide, and in fact is able to um, kill myeloma cells far more effectively than either POM or LEN. So structurally, this is different even than ibertamide, the one that I just showed you a moment ago. And in fact, if you look at the data uh, at, the, at the MTDs, what you'll see here is that somewhere between uh, 20 and 50% of patients actually had a response, a very small number of patients here. Uh, and one of the pieces that I think is most exciting again is that we're seeing deep responses with 480, but more importantly, one of the weaknesses of the image for the, all the time that we've known them has been that they don't tend to work as well in myeloma that grows outside of the bone marrow. 
So what we call extramedullary disease, those lumps and bumps that develop, those are in fact quite challenging to deal with because from a disease perspective, they tend to be more resistant to regular treatment. But what we saw with 480 is that it seems to have actually increased activity in extramedullary myeloma, myeloma that grows outside the bone marrow. And this may be due to the unique chemical structure that allows it to penetrate into the tissue more effectively than either LEN, POM, THAL, and maybe even CC220. And as an example, there was a patient on this phase one study with a large liver mass that completely went away with 480. That's something we've not seen with either LEN or POM or THAL, hasn't really been evaluated with CC220. So I think the conclusion from my session really is that targeting IMIDS really remains important because Cerebron is an important target in myeloma cell activity. These new IMIDS, IVER and 480, have very different properties from the old ones, and in fact are far more potent than the old ones. Uh, and in fact, part of that potency may be related not just to direct antimyeloma effects, but actually enhancing the immune system. And so there are trials being discussed looking at these new IMIDs after, for instance, CAR T cells, uh, as Dr. Verdeja mentioned before, in conjunction with monoclonal antibodies and partnering with the proteasome inhibitors as well. And just like you're thinking, uh, you're thinking probably just like I am, that while these look really great in refractory myeloma, what happens when you bring them earlier if they're more potent and can help eradicate those clones that may be seeding sites outside of the bone marrow? Those to me are really exciting potentials and uh, that will come in the, in, in the next few years, I hope. Music